Hi, everyone. This is Susan Sandvik. I'm just getting us uh, set up for the Retain Giving Tuesday donors and Boost Year End fundraising webinar. So hold on one second while I get everything set up. All right, hopefully everybody is logged in. You're able to see my screen and uh, we can start the webinar on how to retain, retain your Giving Tuesday donors and boost your year-end fundraising so you guys can end 2023 really, really strong. All right, so today I'm your presenter, Susan Sandvik. I'm a fundraising success specialist here at Mighty Cause. Uh, before coming to Mighty Cause last year. So I've only been here for a little over a year, but I um, spent over 20 years uh, working at nonprofits. So I, and I've worked at, or been a board, a board member for everything from tiny little grassroots nonprofits that don't have any staff to in huge national headquarters um, where um, we're helping, you know, tons of chapters with their fundraising. So um, I've been in your shoes. I know what it's like to try to get those end of year gifts. And so I'm just gonna give you some of um, some tips that I have learned throughout uh, my career to help you guys out. All right, so first thing that we're gonna talk about is um, building gratitude into your fundraising strategy. I am a huge donor stewardship person. Um, I early on in my career, somebody gave me Penelope Burke's book called Donor Centered Fundraising, and that kind of changed everything and how I, I do my fundraising. So I'm constantly thinking about um, how can I thank donors and not just thank them, but keep them informed so they know that their gift created an impact. Um, and so there's just a bunch of ways that you can start. Um, doing this right now with your Giving Tuesday donors. Um, and then just try to think about ways that you can start um, integrating more uh, gratitude as a strategy in um, the next coming year. So um, as I've said, thanking and appreciating your donor is essential to donor retention. If you wanna keep those donors, you wanna make them feel special. Um, and it costs a lot less to retain an existing donor than to acquire a new one. So um, make sure that stewardship is a part of your fundraising plan. It's just as important as asking people for the donations um, is, is thanking people. And you can build um, your donor appreciation and your gratitude into these fundraising operations that you create. Um, get your staff and your volunteers involved in thinking. Uh, we always talk about, you know, using your um, your resources and your reach to get people to um, sign up to volunteer or get them to make a donation. But keeping all of those people just to be a part of um, we would want to show appreciation. We want to thank these people. We want to call these people and just send them a thank you note, um, personalized holiday cards, personalized postcards, whatever it is that you guys can do uh, as a group, definitely try to um, incorporate some stewardship and some gratitude into that. Um, and then everyone wants to know how they're creating an impact. Uh, people don't just give donations because they just want to get rid of money. <laughs> they want to they want to know that they're making a difference. So um, so think about that when you're strategizing is that thanking people doesn't always have to have the words thank you in it. It could be because of a donation, because of your donation, we were able to do this. This story happened because you made a gift last year. Those are other ways that can help really truly make a donor feel special and make sure that their uh, gift is appreciated. Um, 
some keys to thanking your donors. Make it a priority. As I keep saying, you know, this should be just as important as asking people for money. Um, make it a part of your routine. Um, if you maybe once a week, you know that you're going to call some um, five donors and you give yourself, that's your New Year's resolution is to call five donors a week. Um, that is definitely something that can create an impact. And I've done this at organizations and I've dreaded making those calls at organizations. And I will tell you that those calls end up being so um, inspiring. There's always, because you trust me, somebody's like, oh yeah, you're calling me because you're asking me for money again. And when you flip the switch on them and you're saying, no, I'm actually calling to thank you and find out, you know, what's important to you. Um, that conversation, they, the, the walls come down and the conversation shifts. And sometimes you get some really great ideas, um, on, on ways that you can help tell your story, um, to your donors and find out what's important to them. Um, have procedures and resources in place ahead of time to help streamline the process. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time you want to thank somebody or you want to show impact or you want to ask somebody for a donation. Um, you can have a lot of language in place, images in place. Um, you know, right now it's very common that you create like a social media post um, but that post can also be um, added to an email and that could be added to, uh, it could look like the graphics for a postcard you send out. There's a lot of things that you guys can do that can kind of uh, brand your organization and thank people multiple ways, but um, it's using the same tools and resources over and over again. Um, obviously anybody who feels appreciated is more likely to provide future support. So when you are thinking about ways that you want to show impact, how does your organization impact the community? How do donations impact your organization? You wanna showcase this so many ways all year round. And by showing that impact, you're not only marketing your organization, but this is a way to thank those donors and it's a great way to acquire new donors. There's nothing wrong with having um, something that is bragging about what your organization has done and, and just having one line at the end that says, if you would like to support us, click here. And because you guys are a mighty cause clients, you guys will have a website that they can go to and make a donation and create that impact. Um, so it doesn't have to be like a huge solicitation piece. It's, it could be an education and every educational piece. You could just have an opportunity or a button that will hyperlink and lead people back so they can make donations in the future as well. All right. So closing the loop on Giving Tuesday. Um, hopefully, all of you participated in Giving Tuesday and got some donations in and you want to close that loop and so you, that way you can finish out the year with your end of year giving. Um, if you didn't do, if you didn't participate in Giving Tuesday, your end of year fundraising can start today. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about Giving Tuesday, but if anybody out there did not participate in it, do not feel like, oh my gosh, we're never going to catch up because that's not that's not the case. You um, end of year fundraising is huge. And actually the very last week of the calendar year is um, always the mo the biggest fundraising year for any nonprofit um, or most nonprofits, I should say. And um, and then there the the last week is very big with online fundraising. So there's still lots you can do, but I'm just gonna give um, some examples for people who did do a Giving Tuesday campaign, what they can do. So some things that you can definitely do, and this will help you retain those donors, donors is of course you wanna send an email out. Uh, thank them for be participating in Giving Tuesday or a giving event or whatever it is that you had and let them know those results and just say that, you know, be, because of your donations, we raise this much and this is how we're going to utilize these funds. Um, this is a great opportunity, like I said, to think about other ways to thank your donors as well. 
automatically, if somebody donates online, you know that they're going to get that receipt. Um, but this is now above and beyond that receipt. So if there's ways that you can report your results on social media, um, engage, you know, adding thank you videos or graphics that kind of engage people and thank people um, for participating in Giving Tuesday, that works. Um, like we've talked before, uh, calling some key groups of donors is definitely a thing that you might want to do. And and doing a follow-up with snail mail, still it still works and it still matters. And so there's lots of ways that you can send letters, thank you cards, welcome packets, postcards, anything that you um, want to do to help welcome them as Giving Tuesday donors and keep them for the future will definitely help your organization. Hold on one second. All right. Okay, the um, one thing that we definitely wanna talk about is the myth of donor fatigue. Um, trust me, we all, I've worked at so many organizations and there and people talk about, oh, well, my donors just, they're too worn out. They don't wanna give anymore. Um, and, and there is, I will admit that there is some truth to donor fatigue, but there's also um, that also is an opportunity for you to figure out ways to re-engage those donors. So donor fatigue, what a nonprofit usually thinks it is. It's like this mysterious condition that causes nonprofit the donors to feel tired of organiz of donating and they're going to start pulling away from your organization. And it's, the best way that we can um, we can remedy this is by not asking these people for donations anymore, <laughs> and um, and 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 that you have nothing. There's nothing that you at the nonprofit can do to stop donor fatigue, and that's completely untrue. Um, so the condition is created by nonprofits, both individually and collectively. It's just a, it's it's a term that we like to put out there as, as an excuse to why we're not raising more money. But what it really is, is it's a sign that your nonprofit is doing something wrong and you need to change up your strategy. Um, maybe the ask that you sent out didn't work, but that doesn't mean that you stop asking. It means maybe now try asking in a different way um, and just uh, reevaluating how you're asking people for funds and and see if there's anything more that you can do um, to help make people understand that they are creating an impact and that they are making a, a difference in their community. Um, check in with your donors, see what they want, what are they interested in, why did they give a donation to you. This can be a survey. This could be at a, a donor appreciation event, just talking to people. Um, but you just want to find out what makes what made them make that donation in the first place, and is there a way that you can show them that that donation did in fact create that impact um, in the future? Um, with Donor fatigue is definitely something that can be fixed with fundraising strategy, marketing etiquette, donor management. All of those things are really important. Um, I know one thing that will make a donor feel like that a piece is not, that will make them feel unwanted is it, it when you obviously send a mass email out to everybody and it's very clear that you aren't treating them like that they just gave a hundred dollars <laughs> to your organization, that they, if you're not treating them like that, they acknowledging that they just gave um, in some way, shape or form that sometimes makes people feel like, well, I just gave, and now I just got another email and it's asking me to give more and it's not even, and I haven't even gotten my thank you message yet. You know, those are things that you can prevent and kind of create your fundraising and stewardship strategies, um, work together with your marketing team to make sure maybe some certain audiences are taken out of um, marketing pieces that get sent out. Um, and then just kind of, you know, really pay attention to donor management. Um, 
but all of this is definitely curable with some better communication with your donors. All right, so some donor fatigue causes, um, too many urgent requests is probably the number one thing that I see all the time. I always say that your uh, lack of planning, is, your lack of planning is not my emergency. <laughs> um, and so that's how your donors will sometimes feel is if everything is always urgent, either you're not doing something right with at the organization or, um, or, or it, this is just too big of a problem and why should I even make a donation? Um, you, you just don't want that. You want to have um, a nonprofit that's in great standing, that it looks like that you're spending money wisely, that you're, you're doing everything you can to keep, um, keep your organization going, your impact going and, and strategize all of that. So just make sure um, urgent requests are truly urgent at your organization. Failing to close that loop, um, like we keep saying is that donor stewardship is such a huge, huge thing. And you wanna make sure that your donors know how is this nonprofit using my donation? Did they even get it? Did, you know, and are you making sure that they are receiving their thank you notes, their receipts and all of that? Um, do they have a place to go if there is a feeling of dissatisfaction with your organization? Can their voice be heard? Those are all things that are really important to try to maintain those donors and make sure you create that, that conversation at all times. Um, poor donor management, losing touch or failing to reach out, um, is that's huge. And so make sure that once they become a donor, that you have a, a set plan of how you're going to communicate with these people and keep in touch with them. Um, throughout the donor donation cycle so that way they donate every year and they're in that stewardship cycle is always a part of that um not changing up your ask um i've seen this happen a lot people um in think well this is i'm asking i like the way that this person put this ask together and so i'm going to keep asking with this exact same language over and over and over again um that doesn't always work. And so just think about how um, the reasons and the personalities of people who might donate. I'm a person, I, all you need to do is tell me what you're going to be doing and give me some bullet points and, and, and an easy way to make a donation. That's all I need. Other people really want that story. They want to hear um, those stories from the individuals that uh, this is impacting. Some people really love to see data and they want to see infographics with all of the numbers of, of how um, you've impacted your community. And some people just, they just want to make sure that you're, you're in good standing and what they give you every year. And they just want to make sure that you're, you're doing what you promised to do with their money. So those are all ways that you can keep changing up the ask. You can also think of different ways um, to use Mighty Cause to do your fundraising, you know, having different um, events, different part, uh, peer to peer fundraisers, um, creating different um, opportunities where, um, when you're creating a fundraiser, you can create it for specific programs, um, things that they might be a little bit more interested in. Those are all ways that you can kind of change, keep changing up the ask throughout the year. So that way you're asking different ways for different things and hopefully making more money. Um, and make sure that your donors, when they give, they don't feel if they're not getting anything back from the nonprofit, that's never a good thing. Um, so make sure that they know about their impact that they've made, um, invite them to opportunities to um, hopefully impact your organization some more, um, and, and make sure that you feel like this is a relationship that isn't just about somebody writing me a check uh, once a year. It's something more and, and important. All right, so let's, I'm sorry. So let's talk about the transition to end of year giving. So um, year-end fundraising, Giving Tuesday uh, was 
kind of created as a day to kind of kick off your year end giving. But like I said before, if you did participate in Giving Tuesday, that's great. We're going to talk about how it go into year end fundraising. But if not, today is a great day to start your year end fundraising. So let's just start thinking about from now until the end of the year and what you're doing to get as many donations as possible. Um, we really think that having a year end fundraising throughout the entire month is a great opportunity, but if you can put some extra effort into the last week, especially those last three days of the year, um, that will, it will create an impact. And we do see a lot of online fundraising um, in, in that last three days of the, the calendar year. Um, there's lots of data out there. Um, I know one third of all charitable giving takes place in December. Uh, I've been seeing that those numbers are changing a bit, but it's still a huge percentage of all charitable giving takes place in December. Um, and then, and then, as I've said before, a big percentage uh, takes place of just that final three days. What I have started noticing more and more is the online fundraising um, is, is even bigger than, um, the amount of, that people give online. When you compare your online fundraising throughout the year, December is a huge online fundraising month. Um, for the transition for the end of the year, um, just like we said, uh, donors tend to give on Giving Tuesday in addition to their, their end of year giving. So don't feel like that um, just you can acknowledge their Giving Tuesday gift. But if you want to see if they want to give um, maybe a recurring gift, like ask them to give monthly throughout the year, um, the, the upcoming year, that's a great opportunity to get these people who just gave to even make a bigger impact at your organization. Um, asking them to give again, as long as you're re you're recognizing that they just gave, um, it's definitely an opportunity that you can you shouldn't be afraid of doing. Um, other than that, you will want to think about how you're going to create your year end plan. So option one could be um, a Giving Tuesday. It launches your year end campaign, and it's your whole entire campaign is kind of one big thing with Giving Tuesday and end of year giving, or you can create a separate uh, campaign for end of year fundraising. And we're going to go over that. All right. So use Giving Tuesday to launch your year end campaign. Um, this definitely, it, it's a very popular thing that a lot of people do. It, it helps with branding. It helps creating consistent messaging and, and it just kind of helps you think about everything as, okay, from Giving Tuesday till uh, December 31st, it's all going to have this kind of look or feel to it. Um, so you can keep all of the same messaging, branding. Um, it's um, It just kind of helps you keep your entire fundraising campaign in, in one instead of two campaigns. And it can kind of help you uh, transition from Giving Tuesday to the end of the year giving. The ones, there are some definitely some challenges to this, that there is a difficulty in sustaining that momentum. Um, you want to carry everybody from November to the 31st. And some of that information, if you're branded it, and you've created everything, it might feel stale by the end of the calendar year. So you just want to make sure that you're aware of those challenges and you make everything very exciting. Um, and, and and you're thinking about those different audiences. Um, sometimes donors will feel less responsive if the, the appeals look exactly the same and they keep getting them over and over again in just a short period of time. So by, um, switching it up and making sure that your donations and everything kind of, it, it, it you can have branding and then you can change, but you can still change a look and feel of some of your donations that might help things out. Also really do think about the subject lines every time you send an email. That's a big way um, 
some people just that's the reason why they didn't respond to an appeal is literally whatever you had in the subject line. So by changing the subject line alone, that could definitely impact things. Um, and then just kind of keep trying to think of um, appeals that are fresh and engaging for your supporters. I, I keep saying it, but the reason why I keep saying it is because it's so important. People want to know the impact they're making at, in their community. And so anything you can do to kind of keep telling that story, but in a different way, um, is definitely going to help you out. Um, campaign pain planning. Um, you can, you should really kind of break up your planning into different phases. Um, it's a nice idea in this beginning phase to kind of introduce your theme, um, talk about Giving Tuesday, um, talk about what, you know, how, how um, funds are going to be used um, for the end of the year, you know, keep people engaged with just kind of this phase one Giving Tuesday type phase, but then start talking about the impact, start talking about ways to keep in don donors engaged and plant seeds to, for the reason why somebody should give at the end of the year. So this is a great time to start bragging about your organization. Um, I've seen organizations that do 12 days of Christmas type things, but it's 12 reasons to give to your organization. Um, and, and it's just this constant plan of showing people, bragging about what you did for the year and showing people um, what their donations are going to. Um, from December 19th to the 31st, really focus on that impact, get some hard hitting content, get some stories for this phase. This is the time where people are going to start making that last gift of their calendar year. And so you want to keep them motivated. You want to make it very easy for them to give. And um, and then it's also a great opportunity to maybe think about matching gifts, stretch goals, anything like that to help um, incentivize people to give at the end of the year. All right. Um, a lot of this, a, a lot of people always feel like you have to create everything, um, you know, like a day before you send things. And really you can start creating all of your appeals and everything and really start scheduling things out. I get it. You guys, uh, hopefully you guys will be taking some time off for the holidays and doing things that you want to do. That doesn't mean that you can't fundraise throughout the month of December and still have a life. You just need to prepare things a little bit ahead of time. So doing things like creating videos, um, creating images, infographics, um, using Canva. I'm a huge, huge fan of Canva. Using Canva to kind of create different social media imaging and all of that. You can kind of create all of that and schedule social media posts all month long. Um, and that, that way, you know, you have a solid social media campaign. You can do the same thing with email campaigns and doing all of that. And um, you have a lot of opportunities to use a lot of different areas to plan this content. All right. So we kind of talked about um, using, creating campaign that really utilizes Giving Tuesday, but if you ever want to create a separate campaign, this is definitely something you can do too. I know a lot of people, they almost treat their campaigns like one, it looks like your November campaigns and one looks like your December campaigns. <laughs> um, and, and these are definite things that you can kind of play around with and see what works best at your organization. One of the things with hosting separate is that messaging is fresh. It's exciting. The images are fresh and exciting. Um, so that kind of helps you out. Um, it definitely allows you to kind of focus on this December holiday giving, give before the end of the calendar year, really focus on, on the importance of end of year giving. Um, and that, that definitely helps out as well. Um, challenges when you're doing the separate campaigns, um, sometimes it, it just, it's more work for your organization. So, uh, it's just something to kind of think about what do you really have the ability to do at this place 
in your in your organization and what maybe could be an idea for next year. So you want to make sure that you get your end of year gifts this year, but maybe we'll do a bigger campaign next year and we'll start everything um, in October versus starting it in December. Um, you want to make sure that you have fully wrapped the Giving Tuesday campaigns, as I keep saying. Um, if you are treating them as separate campaigns, you really want to make sure that the people gave Giving Tuesday um, have been thanked and the impact has been shown because as I said before, those people can still give before the end of the year uh, and they'll they'll give again. So you just want to make sure that, that that's all um, has been put to bed. And, um, but at the same time, a lot of this, some of the, those donors might feel you're moving from one ask too quickly to the next. Um, and so you just want to make sure that those fe people feel very special, that they've made a donation and that, that it's just a suggestion. It's just an idea to, um, get people to make a larger impact. All right. Some tips for success. Um, Plan campaigns that are distinct and, but reflective of each other. Um, you want, there's a lot of stories that you can collect at your organization from your programming departments and you can work with marketing departments. And like I've said, I've worked with organizations where I am the programming department and the marketing department and the development department. I totally get that um, sometimes you're the person that, <laughs> that does it all. Um, but if you do work at a place with a lot of different um, departments, make sure that you guys are talking to each other, that you're collecting those stories that you can tell, that you're using them in marketing, and that it, that you're not treating marketing and fundraising as completely just separate silos, that that all of this um, these campaigns can work together. Um, use visual cues and branding to differentiate between campaigns. Um, just colors and, and changes and, and logo changes and all of that, all of that really does impact the way some people view things. I mean, just look at how people get excited about the holiday cups at Starbucks. <laughs> it's still a cup. It's still doing the same things, but people get excited when things have a little visual difference or have something um, where it's still branded, but it's something that kind of signifies the end of the year or the holiday season. And so just kind of make sure that you're, you're taking advantage of some of that. Um, focus on your impact in your year end campaign. I keep talking about this, but this is such a great time to share highlights and milestones of everything that you guys did in 2023. Um, think about this as like that end of year wrap up that you want to make sure, that, uh, um, uh, you know, those end of year newsletters that you send up to, to, to people to let them know what you did throughout the, the calendar year. This is such a great opportunity to put that information together. And not only can it help you with your end of year giving, but if you put this information together, it's going to help you in your January giving, in your February giving, because you're going to have like, okay, we collected all of this data to show people what we did in 2023. Let's share that again, but with an ask that's happening in January. Um, make sure your giving campaign has that distinct end. Um, and, and like I said, it just helps you out uh, to report your results. Um, we're, I'm talking about Mighty Clause. So there's definite things that you're going to want to maybe change. If you did do a Giving Tuesday campaign, um, make sure that you're, you've updated everything that you need to update in Mighty Cause. So you have the section in the story um, of your Mighty Cause pages. You might have mentioned Giving Tuesday. Make sure that you're, you switch that language so it talks about end of year giving or it has more evergreen language to it. Um, make sure you, your checkout flow meets everything that you want. If you wanted to change your donation forms, you want to change your thank you message that pops up after they made the donation, or you want to change messaging 
that went with the receipts. Now that the Giving Tuesday is over or the Giving event is over, this is your opportunity to kind of make those changes. And that way, you're once again, now you're thinking about more year-end giving or, um, or, or thinking about how you might want to get people to give in 2024. Um, make sure, and, and like I said, with the checkout flow, checkout flow is more than just um, your donation form. It's that thank you page and the um, thank you receipts that they receive as well. So just make sure you're updating that messaging. Um, the other things that you might want to do, like I, as I mentioned, you would want to maybe uh, edit your about section or your story. You also, for a lot of people, they may have, you may have uh, changed your goals or your metrics to be just specifically about a giving campaign or giving Tuesday. So make sure you reset your goals and your metrics. Um, update any custom donation descriptions or suggestions. And then um, if you can just add a little year end flair to your thank you page, I think that will be a big help. Um, and once again, thinking about that stewardship year round um, and thanking people in, in a special way if they give at this end of year. All right, finally, donor retention is huge. I, I know people seem to always think about like, how do we get new donors? How do we get new donors? But if you're not keeping the donors that you've had, um, then there's definitely something wrong with your system. So um, why donor retention matters? Well, it's cost effective and it's efficient. It's It takes less time and resources to, um, to keep those donors than it is to acquire new donors. So just make sure that that's a constant part of what you do every year is that you're trying to make sure that you get those donors to come back. Um, this is going to help you grow your donor base. If you're constantly trying to find new donors and you're not getting those people that gave in the past to give again and again, you're not really going to end up growing. You're just going to end up, you're kind of replacing donors instead. And so you want to make sure that you're growing. So make sure um, retention is a huge part of that growth. Um, and then it's just about creating that relationship um, to get people to be a little more faithful to your organization. Um, donors can become fundraisers. They can become volunteers. They can become ambassadors. They can become board members. They can become so much more. And that donation is just the start of that relationship with your organization. So you can, it's really important that you keep that retention. Um, ways that you can help with uh, that retention is to know your numbers. So right now you can calculate your current retention rate by looking at this year's retained donors to last year's retained donors um, to see what your retention rate is. Um, there is a Mighty Clause retention report. If you have been using our system for um, over a year, um, you will be able to see um, uh, a re you, can, you will be able to run a report that you can see which donors um, gave in 2022 and have not yet given in 2023. By running that report and, and sending those people a special year-end appeal or sending them multiple appeals until they um, make their donations, this is a, a ripe audience that um, a lot of them maybe in their brains, they already made their donation this year. They don't even realize that they haven't given yet. So just by sending those kind of reminders out is definitely a good thing for your organization and it will help with your year end numbers. Um, with all that, put together goals. Make sure that you um, have a goal of how many donors you wanna retain, um, how much money um, of, what what are you going to be doing to retain these donors? Um, how many are you going to try maybe making some of these past donors into monthly donors? 
or get them to increase their donations? What are you going to be doing for those goals? And really kind of put those goals into place and treat those people a special um, with those goals. And that's gonna just help your organization. And then finally, um, just really celebrate reaching those milestones and come together with some of these little short term strategies by breaking up your your um, your year round retention goals, breaking it down into, OK, this is what we're doing for December and this is what we're going to do in January to like like I said, to think about. How can you make some of these donors into maybe monthly donors? Um, you know, they donated a hundred dollars for Giving Tuesday. Let's ask them, see if they want to get start giving ten dollars a month um in 2024. In the end of next year, they're gonna end up giving, you know, twenty dollars more than they did this year. So it's just something to kind of think about. All right, finally, you want to make it easy. Um and by using Mighty Cause, you're already helping it out, helping everybody out with all of this. So um, as I've said before, introducing recurring donations can be a huge and simple way for people to give more, but it doesn't impact their wallet as much. So this is a great opportunity to try to introduce recurring donations and subscriptions Um getting people to start giving every single month versus um, just once a year. Um, really look at your online presence. And when I say look at your online presence, some people are like, oh, okay, I'm going to go in and work on my Mighty Cause page. But it has to be so much more than that. Um, we were just talking about you, you, can't, you can't just throw a great party and and expect people to come. You have to send out invitations to get people to come to your party. And that's what you want to do. You want to create that, that online presence, the website, but you have to remember to send out marketing. You have to remember to do social media. You have to remember to do all of that as well to get people to come to your really cool Mighty Cause website. So really kind of think about that and, um, make sure that people know where to go and how to get there. And then um, offer multiple ways to donate. Um, we always feel like maybe if, oh, if I add that link, if I do this, I'm asking too much. And that's never, ever the case. If by creating a text to give, um, it, it just gives those people who are interested in text to give, it gives them a way to uh, to to donate from their phone. Um, same thing with QR codes. People who know what QR codes are, they're great resources and it makes it really super easy for them to make a donation quickly from their phones. Other people, every in your emails, it's always frustrating to me when I see an email that says, um, donate to our organization and you didn't include any hyperlinks, any buttons, anything that makes it super easy for you to just click a button and make a donation. So really make sure that when you're looking at your emails, you can add hyperlinks throughout. Some people like to click on a, a, a word in a um, in the text. Other people need a pretty little button that they can push and 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 um, it hyperlinks back to the page. And you can have it throughout your documents that leads to the same place. Um, so that's always definitely helpful. Um, Think about your, uh, we've already talked about QR codes and donate buttons. Remember that you have, if you're an advanced subscriber, you have um, embeddable donation forms, but you also have widgets that you can start using. And maybe there are blog articles or you have companies that you partner with and they can put a widget on their websites. Um, there's all sorts of different tools and resources that you can do to make it so multiple ways you have multiple ways for people to make a donation and they're all coming in to mighty cause to make that donation all right so let's open this up i'm going to check on the chat and the q and a and let's open this up for uh questions so hold on one second let me open up chat all right, this presentation is definitely going to be shared and um, and we're going to make sure that um, 
that we uh, send you guys the slide deck as well as uh, a video recording of this presentation. Um, let's see here. If you are have been using us for um, Colorado Gives or um, a lot of these others, I think almost all of them, you can use the system until the end of the calendar year. Um, definitely check with your giving event to make sure that you have that functionality, but almost everybody who just recently had a giving event that they, they really did kind of create the giving event to go with the end of year strategy. So you can um, use our free fundraising tools um, till the end of the year. Also, you can, if, um, if for any reason you're like, I want to test out or try uh, any of our advanced subscriber tools and you aren't subscribed now, right now is a great opportunity. You can sign up and get a two week free trial um, and test us out. That will get you guys to kind of dive in and start using um, uh, our tools, see if it kind of meets your needs for the end of the year. And then maybe it's something that you'd want to su actually subscribe to and purchase for the end of the year. So we have lots of options there. Um, how do you recommend thanking donors who gave anonymously? But pretty much if they, if somebody gives anonymously and, and they really, really, truly are anonymous to your organization, thinking is not the biggest thing to them. You know, that stewardship is not the biggest thing to them. Um, the other big, but I am a huge, huge fan of, um, as we keep talking about the impact people can make donations, sometimes people will give anonymously um, on the site, but you still know exactly who they are. And those are still people that you should you should be sending those um, updates on how donations are being used in the community. So that way they get that good feeling of this is how we are positively impacting our community and, and how those donations are being used. Um, somebody wrote Canva rocks, which I completely agree with. I love Canva. So, so um, yes, so please, everybody get into Canva and start using it. It's, it's kind of jaw dropping when I think about, you know, 10 years ago, the limitations we had with graphic design and how easy it is to kind of create some things, some really great looking pieces um, that's all out there. Um, all right. Um, I'm just kind of going through, sorry, everyone. Okay, um, the retention report. Um, I'll, um, I, I'm putting. I'll put together a follow up email, and one of the things I'll do is I'll put in the directions on how to send a retention report and do all of that. But the reports are all located in your reports field, um, and when you go into your, uh, you just go to reports on the left nav, and then there's one section that's just re for retention reports. Once again. You have to be, have been using us for, you know, for like two years, because that's the only way that you can change, um, look at the data from, you know, 2022 to 2023 to make sure that the retention is there. Um, otherwise you might have to change and look at some of your other reports um, and see um, who hasn't given yet this year. Um, but as you use Mighty Cause more and more, just know that we those retention reports make life a lot easier and those reports are really great to have. Um, and as I said, I'm gonna be sharing the recordings for this class. Um, same thing with the slide deck is all yours. And so that will be a follow-up to everybody who um, RSVP'd for this class. Um, how long after a donation comes out do you suggest getting a personal dope? note or thank you out. Um, one thing that's really great is hopefully Mighty Cause is helping you out with um, getting that receipt out right away. They always say um, there's been some data that talks about it. donors who get um, thanked within the first 48 hours are more likely to donate uh, by a huge percentage. I can't remember what it was anytime, but it, I remember that was always said. 
this is where online fundraising has definitely made a huge impact because now it's instantaneous. They get a thank you right away. Um, but that personal, the, the personal touch can still happen. So if you kind of um, think to yourselves, is there something else that we can be doing? Um, I know some organizations, they literally will just be like, all right, let's think about how we can thank people more in the next coming year. And they start looking at their data and they're like, okay, I think that we could probably hand write everybody who donates $250 or more. And then you kind of set yourself up with goals of when you're going to send these things out or when you're going to make those phone calls or when you're going to do that added touch and then just kind of see where that takes you. And if that is starting to really truly make a big impact in donor retention as well as um, increasing um, donations. Um, and so that's just uh, a suggestion. But one thing that's really great, like I keep saying is that we get things out quickly and you can add that personal touch. So you can have your, give yourself a little bit more time because you know that they received, if they donated online, they received that, that thank you right away. Um, um, somebody just wrote, I thought my cost platform is available year round with no cost and you'd have to pay for the advanced features. And that's, that's true. There are some some um, tools and resources you can definitely use year round um, with Mighty Cause, and you will definitely be able to see if um, some of those advanced those essentials and the advanced features are available um, to you. Um, for some for some of you who participate in some of the giving events, you also might be able to get um, a reduced rate at this. Um, time if you do want to sign up for an advanced. So it's definitely something to look into. The advanced features are definitely, definitely the things that uh, I really would recommend any organization investing that money into advanced. I'm not saying this because I work at Mighty Claws. I'm saying this as my former fundraiser self. Um, anything that you can do, I think the tools can definitely help increase your online fundraising and get those messaging, that messaging out in so many different unique ways and that you can really create a, a really solid year round um, fundraising system by, by investing in some of our advanced features, but you can always use our free features at any time. Um, I'm loving that so many people are writing about Canva and I, I mean, if, Let's be honest, if <laughs> I will give them shout outs anytime if <laughs> I, I, I'm a I'm a big, big fan of Canva. Um, let's see here. OK, people have asked about the thanking anonymous donors. And like I said, it's always nice to thank them. But um, but also you want to acknowledge there are people who just don't want to get the thank yous. They don't want to get any of that. So some of this, you have to kind of see who it is and judge it. But I think everybody wants to know that their donation made an impact. So anything that you can create that um, shows them at least that, that will be a big thing. Um, um, I Hopefully I will have this recording out by the end of this week. Um, so you can get that later. And there we go. I think I went through everything that was in chat. Let me look up um, the questions in the Q&A. During the holidays, what are your thoughts about giving gifts to donors? What about certain levels, tokens, gifts? I There are some organizations where they've really done a great job with, um, you know, that, that kind of giving the gift to get donations. And then there's ones where I'm like, do we really need another mug or uh, a keychain or any of that? And a lot of people don't want that. They want their, their money to go to the cause. So anything that you can do that is um, creates impact or it creates marketing um, for your organization. I, I know some places, those t-shirts, 
that that they end up giving out it it really they those t-shirts get worn and they're really truly used and you know i know i've seen live united t-shirts all over the place um for united way and they and i feel like that's definitely something that people will will think about and and wear quite often um but then i also i i know for myself i have drawers and drawers of t-shirts from all the nonprofits that I've helped. And so some, so it's really kind of a decision that you guys would make. Um, I think for most people, they give the gift, not for, to get a gift back. They give the gift because they want to make a difference at the organization and anything you can do that really showcases that, um, that difference that they are making and they're, they're able to impact their community that's the most important thing that you can give to somebody um, versus a gift card or anything else. Um, once again, I will have a video ready for everyone. Do you have some letter samples? Um, and and yes, um, I, I was just talking to um, somebody else on our team and I, I was just saying that I'm going to send a follow-up email and I wanted to get the end of year writing samples, um, uh, templates for, for that. So I will, that will be a part of the email that I will follow up on. Also check out our blogs at any time. I know that the blog that I, when we were talking about this, that the blog was just posted. Um, but it's, it's all, it, we have a bunch of, um, not only giving Tuesday templates, but also end of year giving templates. And I'll make sure that that link is um, attached to my follow-up email. Um, sorry, I, I always am clicking on the wrong things. Um, anything that you guys can do to, um, to get um, influencers to, to, help get your mess, amplify your messages out there. That's definitely something that you can do, um, to help, uh, stand out with, um, the end of year giving. So Terry, I really like this is, is that just having, um, your board, like putting a post out there is great. Putting a post out there and then and then writing to all of your board members and volunteers and staff and just saying, hey, everybody, if you can share our end of year giving post <laughs> that I just posted on Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is that you're using, you know, you um, that it makes it a really easy way for people to make a difference at your organization without making a donation. Literally all they're doing is sharing a post, but by getting that, by having these people share these posts and put their own personal spins and their own personal stories to things, it just amplifies your message, gets it out there and hopefully will get you more donations. So thanks, Terry. Um, and then, as I said, it, uh, the, the presentation will be downloadable and it will be uh, recorded and sent to you. So um, along with slide deck. So that will all be there. And, um, and there we go. So if anybody else has any questions at all for me, um, let me know. Um, <laughs> and, and I will be sending a follow-up email that will give you guys lots of, of, uh, hopefully, um, not only just the video and the slide deck, but some, um, some other resources that will help you with your end of year giving and um and it, anybody one of the benefits i know we were just talking about benefits for advanced and accelerated subscribers versus non-subscribers but one of the benefits is you get to talk to me um <laughs> so actually i am a resource for our advanced subscribers and accelerated subscribers i um, I help with their onboarding, um, once they get the, they get a subscription, but I also am definitely, um, people set up, uh, strategy calls with me all week long. And we talk about things like creating peer to peer events, uh, campaigns, 
how um, they, they might write to me and say, we got a $5,000 gift that we're thinking about using as matching gifts for Giving Tuesday and the end of the year, what would you suggest? Um, and and we, I like I said, it's sometimes really nice to be able to just talk to somebody who's done fundraising for 20 plus years, but also knows her way around Mighty Cause and has resources. <laughs> like I, I'm not a Mighty Cause genius, but I know a couple. Um, and so so we can definitely work together to make sure that um that uh you're strategizing for the end of the year. So definitely if you're an advanced subscriber, um, just reply to me and I'll send you my scheduler and we can make an appointment. If you are an advanced subscriber, I would love to have you in our fold <laughs> and um, I would love to be able to talk to you, but you can always get a demo um, of our advanced subscription tools uh, in the meantime, as well as try out our advanced tools for um, a two week free trial. So Hopefully I was able to answer a lot of your questions. Hopefully you guys are going to have an amazing end of year campaign and uh, look for my email and thanks again for stopping by. All right. Good luck, everyone. Bye.